Hi, my name is Matt. I'm from Table Flip Games. And in this next series, we're going to look at Autodesk Maya. We're going to look at the interface, uh, primitives, working with primitives, selection tools, extrude tool, bevel tool, merge tool, a pen polygon, and finally wrapping up with Maya UVs. This video series is going to get you used to using Maya for 3D modeling. It's also going to show you the tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm actually doing my 3D work for, for freelance and for table flip games. So let's get started. Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at uh, Maya's interface. Um, and during this series, I'm going to actually build uh, this desk that you see here um, using a range of different tools that we'll show you. And then I'll show you how you can uh, UV this ready for texturing. So to begin with, I want to what I want to do is just show you Maya's user interface, uh, where certain buttons are, because it can be quite um, confusing for the first time when you use it. Uh, it definitely put me off when I first opened this up. And when I teach my students, uh, they tend to get a bit nervous when they first open up Maya. Um, and so I'm going to just start fresh with what you'll see. This is what happens when you first time you load up Maya. Um, but actually, the grid is probably a little bit different. So let me just reset the grid. Okay. So this is what you see when you first load up Maya. Um, let me just delete these as well. And I'll show you how to put these buttons on this toolbar in a bit. Uh, but this is this is pretty much what is standard inside of Maya when you open it up. Um, up at the top, you have all your different menus. So like under File, we have all our saving preferences. If we want to export or import into here, like a, an, a, an OBJ or an FBX. We can also send to different game engines. So if you've got a game engine... Uh, project we can actually set it and then send it straight to that send an export straight to there which is really good uh, we also have these down here now what I wanted to do first was is just show you guys how to set up a project so we need to create a new project window so if we go project window just drag this on screen um, we have this here now this is the best thing to do when you're working inside of Maya, is to work inside a project. Now, by standard, um, mine is set to um, a project that I've been working on, but I want to set this to a new project. Now, yours would be C Drive um, Maya Default Project, I think it's called. Um, but all you do is click new, and then you rename this to say, um, because I'm going to be building a desk inside of here. Uh, and I'm just going to find somewhere to put it. So let's come out of here. And I'll just put it here. I'll just create a new folder and call this demo. Um, this project will be available for patron subscribers who subscribe more than $5 a month, uh, where you'll be able to download this and look at what I've done. I'm just going to select the demo folder, select. So what this is going to do now is it's going to create this subdirectory inside of there with all these files, uh, these folders. Um, you say, why, why? I, you probably won't need most of these. You tend to use images and scene to store your files. So click accept. Now, if you move computer, you will have to re then set your project. So if you click set project and then just select the top folder, press set. If we go to save this now, so file, save as, you'll see that it's now saving inside of your demo scene here. So I'm going to call this um, desk. Now, if you notice down here, mine is saying Maya LT, and that's because I'm using Maya Lite. Um, normally, it would just say, um, uh, ask you to save an ASCII or binary. Um, but because I'm using a um, lighter version, it saves in a specific file type. 
So, for example, if I was then to give this to someone who's got uh, the full version of Maya, um, it wouldn't work. So I would have to export them as FBXs or OBJs and then give them to the person need it. Or I could use the full version if I needed to. Um, but the, there is a difference in price. I think the Mayor LT is £36, including VAT, per month, whereas the, the full version is about £200 a month, which is quite expensive. But Mayor LT is good enough for what I use, so there we go. But it does save us that. But there are ways around uh, if you're working with someone who's got a full version. I'm just going to go Save As. Now, you can do increment saves. Um, I think if let me just yeah, but I just tend to just save every so often, control less, and it'll save it. But anyway, so that's my project setup and um, saving covered. It is important for you to save. Don't either turn on the increment saving or um, save regular by pressing control S and that will save it for you. Uh, the next one is um, this tab here. So you've got here, you've got mesh, edit mesh, mesh tools, mesh displays. All these menus have got tools inside of them. So whatever tool you want to use for modeling will be found in one of these menus here. Now one of the things you can do is you can change this here. So if I click on here, I can say rigging, animation, shading, and I can also customize if I want to. And this would bring this menu up and I can create my own new menu set, add certain things inside of there. So it's very customizable, this is. Um, if I want to dock things, I can. So if I wanted to undock that, I can do. And then I can dock it back in there uh, if I need to. Now, if I just take off the outline a minute, I'll come back to that. Um, over here, we have our channel layer box modeling toolkit and attribute editor. Now, this is another place where there's a lot of tools that you use constantly during, so it's quite a good menu. Also, there's some other um, sliding tools that I'll go through in another video here. Your attribute editor at the moment, because we have nothing selected in scene, this won't show anything. And it's the same with the channel box here. So as soon as I show you how to build stuff, um, we'll see lots of information. I'll come back to that. Um, now, one thing I would say is um, if you're in Unreal, um, you'll want the grid to be set in a certain way. Um, it's centimeters. Um, so in Unreal, you work in centimeters. In Unity, you work in meters. Um, but to change the grid, you can click this button here. Now, anything inside of this menu, if it's got a little square like this in any of these menus, it means that it will open up a option tab. So if I click on the option tab here, maybe not turn it off, I can do a calculation, so 110, click apply. So this is now quite a big grid, and if I was to import a character into here, um, it would be, say, the standard Unreal template character. It's about six foot tall, so it would actually, you could model to scale from that. Uh, I also would set up, um, if I come into down here, into the settings, I can change the settings to centimeters. Click save. Um, and when I when I do a Unreal 4 video uh, later on on the YouTube uh, channel, um, I'll show you how to go through this again. But it's just important to know it. If you do want to turn the grid off, you can either go to grid here or you can hit this button here. Now, all these buttons correspond to different things, and I'll, sh I'll go through those in a minute. Um, couple more things so you can be logged in here these are all your snapping tools so if you ho hover over it will tell you what these buttons do 
So we've got a, bear with it. Cool. Um, we've got snap to vert, uh, snap to curve, snap to grid, and I forgot which these two are, but a lot of the time you won't use half the buttons inside of here. So um, it is all about like experimenting and seeing what goes where. Okay. Down here we have our move, we have our just a normal selection, we have a move tool, rotate and scale. We also have the different views here, so we can go into different views. So we've got top, front and side. We've also got something called the outliner. So anything that's inside of your scene will feature inside of here. And to turn that on and off, you just click here and it will turn it on and off. If I want to go into selection mode, I can hit spacebar and then hover over where I want to go, hit spacebar again, and that will make it bigger. So spacebar goes into the different um, viewports and then hit space again, and you'll make the, that viewport larger, whichever mouse, wherever the mouse is. And it tends to tell you what camera you're in here. Down here is if you start to do animation, this is the timeline where you can keyframe, but we won't be touching that in this series. Down here as well is the Maya generic options. So for example, if we wanted to change our working units to meters, we can do here. We've got degrees and then the time, so I tend to go 60 frames. So coming back up here, we've also got these t uh, tabs here. So we have, and I will admit, some of these tools I never use, so I really don't know what they do. Um, these ones I do, curves. Curves are quite good for if you're drawing out like, um, quite organic forms, uh, you could draw a curve out and then have it extrude, like if it's a pipe, you can have it extrude along the curve. Um, or if it's like um, an archway and you wanna get that arch nicely modeled and shaped in the archway, you could do, you could use a curve and then model around that to make sure that you get a nice archway. Uh, I'm just gonna delete that. Um, polymodeling is what you're going to use the most. I'll go into these in in the next um, in the next video. Uh, if you're sculpting in Maya, I, I don't know many people who do. They normally use ZBrush, um, but you can sculpt. And again, rigging, animation, and shading. Um, let's just put a primitive in so we can see this. So here you'll have your channel box and layer editor. So I can actually say, uh, all I did was left click on this, hold shift and left click down here. And I'm just gonna type in 10. Uh, let's go 50 so I can see the box. There we go. Now we're in 3D space here. So you'll need to know how to rotate around, uh, around here. So if we, if I hold alt, go left click that allows us to drag around this working space if I go middle mouse button I zoom in and out if I go alt right mouse button holding it and dragging it in and out and if I hold alt middle mouse button that allows me to pan around so it's alt hold left mouse button to rotate middle mouse button to zoom, alt, hold middle mouse button to pan around, and then this will dolly zoom in. So alt, hold right mouse button to zoom in and out like that. Now, for example, if I zoom all the way out, it's like, oh no, I've lost it. I can actually come to my outliner here, select the object and press F. And what F does is it frames that object. So I could be here, and then I can frame it back again. So F is to frame your object. Now if your gizmo, this is what we call it, a gizmo, um, you'll notice that it'll be blue, green, and red, and that represents the different axes in 3D. 
So we work in three-dimensional space, which is X, Y, and Z. Sorry, I got that Z. Z is blue, Y is green, red is X. In the next video, we're going to look at Maya's uh, pivot system. Uh, this will help you manipulate your assets inside of the 3D space. But we'll also look at primitives and how we can use primitives to model everything inside of Maya. If you like this video and want to see more, we have a range of videos on our YouTube channel covering topics from programming to art, and eventually we will have animation tutorials on this site. If you'd like to support us, you can subscribe and like. And if you want to have early access to these videos, have a say on what topics are covered, and also have access to the source code and art assets from this series and other series, please visit our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week with a new video.